You're traveling through another dimension. A dimension not only of sight and sound, but of mind. A journey into a wondrous land whose boundaries are those of imagination. Your next stop, the Twilight Zone. Jenny, that you? Yes, Aunt Agnes. And where are you going, young lady? Oh, no place. And what are you going to do when you get there? Well, play, I guess. Finish your homework first. I did. English and arithmetic and... Jenny! Honest, Aunt Agnes, go look in my room if you want. It's late. Dinner will be on soon. I know. I'll be back in time, I promise. Well, see that you do. Bye, Aunt Agnes. And Jenny! Yes? See that you're back before the store closes, in case I need anything. Yes, ma'am. Ben? Ben, are you in there? Come in. Hi, Ben. Why, who's that? It must be my favorite princess. Ben, will you help me? What's the matter? Howie and the boys are in the park playing softball and... Well, why aren't you out there with them? You know they don't like girls on their team, but if I bring somebody else to play... Hmm, now who might that be? You, Ben. You're so much fun and... Uh, I don't know. I... <clears throat> I'm getting pretty old, you know. No, you're not. They like you. Uh, sometimes they don't like the things I do. Then do it for me, Ben. We can be on the same side. I need you. Well, <laughs> if you put it that way, after all, you are my princess... Aren't you? Of course I am. You know that. Across the far reaches of time and space. Yep. Well, then I'd better provide the transportation. Come on, Princess Jenny. Never mind your leg brace. Just right on my shoulders. There we go. Oh, thank you, Ben. We'd better hurry. The game already started. Next batter. Hey, batter, 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 batter. Go on, pitcher. Come on, throw the ball. Leave him alone. He's winding up. Rally, rally. The pitcher's name is Sally. Go, pitcher. Go, pitcher. Steer right three. You're out. Hey, umpire. You're crazy. Yeah, that wasn't a strike. Sure was. Was not. I call him like I see him. <laughs> Howie Gottlieb, you're never going to get to heaven. That was a ball and you know it. Was not. Was too. How about it, Ben? You saw it. Now, now, Jenny. Howie's the umpire. Hear that? Who's up next? You are. What? You guys are playing me and Ben. If nobody wants to be on our team, we don't care, do we, Ben? I, I'd better warm up. I'm pretty old to be playing softball. Where's the, uh, bat? Right here. Go on, Ben. You can do it. Well, if you think I can, Jenny, then I'll give it a try. Spread out, everybody. Let's play ball. All right, pitcher. Come on. Strike him out. Hey, bat, 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 bat. Here it comes. Swing, Ben. Whoa! He crammed it. Where'd it go? I can't even see it anymore. Home run. No fair. You said you wouldn't use magic anymore. Did I? I don't remember saying that. Yeah, that's cheating. Who cheated? Nobody cheated. What do you think? I'm not sure. Could be him. If it is, it's certainly a clever disguise. Keep walking. Don't let them spot us. It's been said that science fiction and fantasy are two different things. Science fiction, the improbable made possible. Fantasy, the impossible made probable. What would you have if you put the two together? Well, chances are you'd have a story about an old man named Ben, who knows some tricks most people don't know, and an 11-year-old girl named Jenny, who walks with a brace on one leg and who loves her friend Ben very much. What happens next? We'd hate to spoil it for you. Better stick around because they've already begun their journey together into the Twilight Zone. And now, the Twilight Zone and our story, 
The Fugitive, starring Stan Freeberg, with Stacy Keach as your narrator. Come on, let's stop arguing and play. With what? We don't have a ball anymore. He knocked it out of the park, remember? I really should apologize for that, I guess. All right, never mind. We'll play something else. Like what? How about Spaceman? Yeah, that's a good one. In that case, those who wish to play、uh, Spaceman, please raise your hands. I do. I do. I do. I do. That's it then. We'll play Spaceman. Jenny, you be the Martian. No, not this time. It's your turn. I know, but gee, Ben, I'm not as good as you are. Oh, I wouldn't say that. It's true. I can't turn into things the way you can. Yeah. Come on, Ben. Be a good guy. Jenny's too slow. Very well. But this is the last time. Yes.、Yeah. This is going to be so much fun. What should I do? What are you asking her for? Because Jenny gets to write the script. Who says? I think it's only fair. Go ahead, Jenny. Well, see that rock over there by the bushes? Yes. That'll be the rocket ship. I see. And I'm the captain. What are you talking about? Who ever heard of a girl being a captain? Yeah, Jenny. I'll write you, bunch of babies. Howie, you be the captain. The rest of you are lieutenants and stuff. Who are you? <laughs> I'm the beautiful princess. Ah. Listen to her now. <laughs> She gets to choose. Okay, now. Ben, you go over there to the ship. Like this? We just landed. See, this is Mars. We're exploring, trying to find out if any Martians are here. Got it? What do you want me to do? Hide behind the bushes. I mean the ship. When we get there, you come out and make it scary this time. You know what I mean? Really horrible. Not too horrible. Howie, you're a sissy. Okay, man, stick with me. Get out your ray guns. You're supposed to hide, Ben. Very well. Goodbye for now. Uh, find anything, Captain Spaulding? You're Captain Spaulding. Okay, okay. Well, did you? No, sir. Nothing round here. Then let's blast off for Earth and go home. What about the girl? Leave her here. Hey, you can't do that. Sure, I can. I'm the captain, aren't I? You think there's any Martians hiding in the ship? No way. It's sealed. Better check it out. Go on. You go. You're the captain. Are you too chicken, Howie? I'm not chicken. Then go. I'm going. <laughs> it's only a Martian. But it's ten feet tall. Then shoot your ray guns. He went back behind the ship. You got him. <laughs> I think they did. Ben, how do you do that? Oh, just a little trick I learned. Yeah, but where? Remember what I've said. You mustn't tell anyone about my, my tricks. Ben's magic, aren't you, Ben? Ah, that's enough for one day. Time to go home, Jenny. I'll provide the transportation. <sighs> Here we are, my lady. Door to door service. Thanks, Ben. How do you know how to ride a skateboard? Oh, I've watched your friends. I'm a、uh, fast learner. Pretty neat. That'll be ten cents, please. I'll pay you tomorrow. Can I trust you? Maybe yes, maybe no. In that case, it's a deal. Come on, I'll carry you upstairs. Ben, you're so nice. What? Oh my. What did I do to deserve that? <laughs> say I'm weary. Say I'm sad. Say that health and wealth have missed me. Say I'm growing old. But add, Jenny kissed me. What's that? Earth poetry. You made it up? Not me. But I like it. So do I. Up we go now. Careful of the stairs. <laughs> I'm always careful. Ben. Hmm. Tell me something. What is it, little monkey? Well, if you can do so many things. Hmm, some things. How come you don't make my leg well? Because then I wouldn't have the fun of carrying you. <laughs> You'd get yourself a young boyfriend, and I'd never see you again. I'm serious. You could do it, couldn't you? Oh, perhaps. But Jenny, I, 
I mustn't. Why? People would wonder how it happened. Besides, I shouldn't、uh, interfere. That's not interfering. That's. I told you to be back before the liquor store closed. Oh, it's my fault, Mrs. Gann. Jenny told me, but I, I must have lost track of the time. It's always your fault, isn't it? Don't be mad at him, Aunt Agnes. Shut up, you. Put her down. Of course. <clears throat> Get inside, girl. I'm going. You ungrateful little gutter snipe, Mrs. Gann. Please. You stay out of this. After all I've done for the girl, after I fed you, took care of you, gave you a place to sleep. Where'd you be without me, huh? Well, I'll tell you, in an orphanage. And if you don't mind your p's and q's, that's where you'll end up. Now get to your room. Please, Aunt Agnes. I said, get in there. <coughs> What are you looking at, <coughs> Mrs. Gann? Don't you ever lift your hand to Jenny again.、Oh, don't you tell me how to raise that child. You heard me. Now you listen to me. I've had a stomach full of you hanging around that girl, turning her against me, filling her head with crazy ideas. This ain't none of your business. You hear me? I hear you. Well, I ain't gonna put up with it no more. And if I hear tell of you even talking to her from now on, I'm gonna call the cops. So that's how it is. You bother us again, and that's what'll happen. So help me, and shut up with all that slobbering. You hear me?、Oh, now what? Yeah, Mrs. Gann. What about it? Excuse us, madam, but we're trying to gather some information about a tenant of this building. They call him Old Ben. Him? Do you know the gentleman? <laughs> He's no gentleman. No, if that's not the proper term. You cops. In a way. Uh, FBI probably, or the IRS. I knew it. May we come in? I guess so. What did he do? If you don't mind, we'll ask the questions. Okay, but ask him in the kitchen. I gotta fix dinner. Very well. How long has he lived here? In this building, year and a half. Yeah, that'd be about right. Oh, they're talking about Ben. Do you know his previous address? Mister, nobody knows nothing about him. What his name is, where he come from. Most interesting. Have you ever seen him do anything unusual? Like what? Well, what you might call magic. Nah. Kids say he's good at tricks, but I never seen any. Can't say that he works. Maybe he gets checks in the mail, but not that I know. So he has no visible means of support. Ben. Jenny, what is it? Ben, oh Ben. Something wrong? Two policemen. They're talking to my aunt. They're after you. Ah,、uh, I didn't think she'd go through with it. No, Aunt Agnes didn't call them. They came right after you left. Jenny, this is very important. What did they look like? I was in my room. I just saw a little bit of them in the kitchen, but I don't know. Tall, kinda. Dark-haired, um, young, but not real young. Suits and I think neckties. And did the suits look brand new, without a wrinkle, like they'd just been made? Yeah, that's right. Ah,、oh, it's them. I knew it would happen someday. They've finally caught up with me. Who has been? What are you so scared of? What did you do? I, I can't tell you that, Jenny. Was it something bad? Not what you and I would think of as bad. Then tell me. I thought we were friends. We are, best friends. Friends don't keep secrets. I don't know where you came from or why you're running away. I'm sorry, little monkey. It doesn't matter now, anyhow. They're here. It's too late. No, it isn't. I know a swell hiding place. They'll never find you. They'll. Yes. Jenny, what are you doing in here? Nothing. Is he here? Not a trace. Where is he? I don't know. You're lying. She's lying. I can tell. She knows. Do you, child? No, sir. I came to see him, but he was gone. I think he's out on the prairie feeding pigeons. The prairie? That's what we call the park on the corner. We pretend it's out in the wilderness, and we hide behind the bushes and play games and. You pretend too much. Yes, ma'am.
Well, if you see him, please say nothing of our visit. Oh, don't worry. I know how to keep my mouth shut. You too, little girl. Okay. We'll check back tomorrow. You do that. And you, get home right now. Yes, ma'am. Wait, what's that? What's what? That thing in your shirt pocket. Oh, that's just Gandalf. Gandalf? My pet mouse. You remember Anna Agnes. What's it doing out of its cage? Oh, he gets bored staying in my room all the time. Well, you put it back in right now. I never should have let you keep it. I have a good mind to... Bye, Anna Agnes. I ought to beat you till you can't sit down, but I won't, because I'm too tired. Go to bed and don't let me hear a peep out of you. Good night, Anna Agnes. And don't try sneaking out again if you know what's good for you. Keep that filthy white rat out of my sight. Come on, Gandalf. Hi, Gandalf. How are you, boy? Guess what? I brought you a new twin brother to play with. <clears throat> you weren't really going to put me in the cage with Gandalf, were you? No. <laughs> I knew you were going to change back. We sure fooled him, didn't we, Ben? Whoever they are. For the moment, but they'll be back. And sooner or later, they'll catch on. I think it's so neat the way you do that. One thing I don't get, though. How do you make the clothes change, too? when you turn into something else. Eh, not very difficult. It's all matter. One molecular structure is much like another, isn't it? I guess. Speaking of changing clothes, Jenny, you'd better start wearing a dress instead of those jeans, don't you think? At least some of the time, or your aunt will have a fit. I don't care. Let her. Now, now, that isn't very respectful, is it? You must remember she's a very nervous person. She isn't wholly responsible for her behavior. Well, if she's not, who is? I don't have an answer for that. In any case, try to forgive her, if you can find it in your heart. After all, she's only human. All right, but what about you? What are you going to do? Oh, the best I can, I reckon. I'm serious. So am I. That's all any of us can do. Even you? Even me. Beyond that... Ben? Yes? How come those men are after you? That's uh, a long story. You can tell me. You'll still be my best friend no matter what. Are you a criminal? In a way, yes. Yes, I suppose I am. What'd you do? Rob a bank? Oh, nothing like that. Did you kill somebody? Heavens, no. Then you must be a communist. <laughs> no, little monkey, not a communist. And not a terrorist, either. I'm not an enemy of anyone. At least, not anyone I can think of. Then what? Shh. What's the matter? Those two men. They may still be close by. I heard them leave. I'd better go to the window and check the street, just to be sure. See anything? Huh. It's just as I thought. They're downstairs on the other side of the street. What are they doing? Watching the building. Waiting for me to come out. Oh, Ben. Don't you worry now. I'll... I'll think of something. Listen, Ben. I have an idea. Why don't you fool him again? And how do you propose doing that? Easy. Turn into something. I doubt it would work a second time. Sure it would. Something really little, like a spider or, or a cockroach. They'd never find you then. I'm afraid they would. But how? <laughs> Those boys have ways. They're pretty clever. You see, Jenny, they know my real form. They can tell when I'm in the vicinity. I'm talking about my true shape. The way I really look. Isn't this the way you really look? Oh, no, no. Have I ever seen you the way you really look? Nope. Not even when you turn into a Martian with all those eyes? Definitely not. Then you must be really icky. I wouldn't say that, exactly. <laughs> You'd be surprised. There are certain adult females who have found me quite attractive. Or so they said. I want to see. No, no, Jenny. You've been very good about letting me keep my secrets. Can't you even tell me just one? Well, all right. Just one. I suppose it wouldn't do any harm. You see, I'm not from around here. That's okay. I'm not either. We moved here from... What I mean is, I'm not actually a resident of this world. Huh? I come from another planet. I knew it. I knew it. Which one? Mars? No. One much farther away. You've never heard of it. 
Anyway, Jenny, you see, those men out there, they've come a long way. They're trying to catch me so they can take me back. Because of what you did? Mm-hmm. And I don't want to go back. I've grown to like it here. But they've located me. So now the only thing I can do is find another world to hide in. Another world? One as far away from here as possible. That's my only chance. You mean you're just going to go away? I don't want to, little monkey. But I have no choice. But Ben, you're the only friend I have. Look at me, Jenny. Please? That's it. Before I go, there is one thing I want to do. A last good deed. I'd have done it long before this, but it would have shown them where I was. Now, that, that doesn't matter anymore. What do you mean? Take that thing off your leg. My brace? Go on. You won't need it anymore. But... Trust me. Okay. Now hold very still. What's that? Just something I carry with me from the other place. The secret of my magic. My leg. It, it feels all funny. Sort of tingly. Jenny! Yeah? Who are you talking to? Myself. Well, you can go crazy that way. Cut it out. Okay, I will. Good night. Night. Ben. Ben, is that you? No, Ben. Stay away from the window. Don't go outside. Don't. Ben, look. My leg. I can walk without the brace. It doesn't hurt anymore. Oh, Ben. Ben. Come back, Ben. There's the girl. Where's she going? Hold on. What? Going out at this time of night? It's past your bedtime. Excuse me. Well, well, look at that. Jenny, uh, how can you walk without your leg brace now? Something happened? Something we should know about? Get out of my way. Where is he, Jenny? Where's Ben? I don't know. And if I did, I wouldn't tell you. You made him go away. You made him leave me. I hate you. We've got to stop her. No, don't use it. You mustn't. It's the only way. Now you've done it. Quickly, we've got to get out of here. He's somewhere outside. I'm sure of it. Jenny? Jenny, where are you? Jenny! What are you doing down there on the floor? Oh, must have fallen. Are you hurt? Jenny, answer me! Well? Well, what? She's all right, ain't she? I'm afraid not. Oh, no. I don't have any money for a hospital. Hospital? I don't know why she'd want to do a stupid thing like that anyway. What are you talking about? Going down the stairs without her leg brace. What do you think? Whatever's wrong with your niece, Mrs. Gann, it doesn't have anything to do with her legs. Nothing to do with... In fact, her legs appear to be perfectly all right. Both of them. Then what? However, the girl does seem to be in a rather serious condition. How serious? Well, she doesn't have a fever. In fact, I can't find any organic cause. But if her pulse continues to weaken... Well, what's the matter with her? Whatever it is, it's beyond my knowledge. It may well be more than medical science can understand. The only thing we can do now is wait. I've left the window partially open so the room won't be quite so stuffy. If she doesn't show signs of improvement during the next hour, perhaps you should call the hospital. They can run some tests. Though I can't imagine what they'll find. Oh, no. Jenny, I made a promise to your mother. But I don't know what to do. <laughs> Hello, little monkey. Ben, I thought you went away. I did, but I couldn't stay away from my best friend for long. Besides, being a fly isn't much fun. <laughs> Wings and all, not to mention they're colorblind. Even my glasses wouldn't have helped. Blew. Now you're back in bed, I see. Oh, Ben. What seems to be the matter? I don't know. I saw those two policemen. They're not policemen. Uh, not exactly. 
What did they do? I tried to get away, but one of them took something out of his pocket, like that magic thing you carry. What? They used the molecular ray on you? Uh, that's going too far. They told me to stop, and then I fell down. Am I gonna die, Ben? Eventually, as we all must, but not now. Do you trust me? You know I do. Then close your eyes. What are you gonna do? Something to make you well again. The way you fixed my leg? That's right. Just lie still. Ben, I feel fine. Better? Yes, I'm fine. How did you do that? Just another little secret I brought with me. That should neutralize anything they've done. It did. Ben, I... Ben, listen. They're here. Your Majesty. Your Majesty. I've been expecting you. We're sorry to intrude like this, but uh, you're aware of the rules. Yes, yes, at ease. Where's my aunt? She's sitting on the sofa, resting peacefully. We've paused her temporal flow. Just while we're here, uh, she won't know anything's happened. That was a terrible thing you did. Hurting an innocent child. We didn't want to hurt her, Your Majesty. It was the only way, sir. We knew you'd return to make her well again. I understand, but I still don't like it. Ben, what's going on? How come they called you Your Majesty? Well, little one, <laughs> I have to confess. You see, I'm something of a fraud. Why? I'm not really a criminal, and these two men aren't really policemen. Something more along the lines of palace guards. Huh? They're actually my subjects, and I regret to say I'm what you would call their king. Oh, come on. Cross my heart and hope to die. Then what are you running away for? It's hard to explain. Wouldn't make much sense to you, I suppose. I guess I wasn't cut out to be a king. All that responsibility, the fuss, the pomp and circumstance, I don't know. After the first thousand years, it sort of got me down, you know? I knew it would be at least four thousand more years before I could turn the job over to someone else. So I just took off, Jenny. Split. High-tailed it. Went on the lamb. In short, I skedaddled. Uh, begging your pardon, but it wasn't 4,000 Earth years, Your Majesty. Quite right, quite right. In Earth terms, it would have been even longer. Well, all I can say is, he must have been a pretty good king to cause all this trouble. Oh, he was, miss. He was the best of kings. You should have seen him in his royal attire, with all his royal appendages. The grandest leader to walk upright in the entire galaxy. Ah, uh, that's enough now. But it's true. You can have your Venusian vegetables, your Syrian slime molds, your strutting bivalves from Betelgeuse. When Exolotl went walking, or should I say perambulating, it was like a third sun shining down from the heavens. <laughs> tut, tut, gentlemen. Is that who you really are, King Ixa... Ixolotl? <laughs> Oh, what's in the name? So, you see, miss, that's why we want him back. His subjects have been pining for him ever since. Life has been listless. An endless succession of moon phases. There is no joy in Ixolotlville. In other words, we're as fond of him as you are. We need him. But you can't have him. Eh, not much to be done about it now, Jenny. They've found me out. <laughs> I was on a sort of vacation, but all that's over now. The Royal Transporter is waiting, sir. In that case, gentlemen... But Ben, I mean your majesty, you can't go away with them. I need you here. I hope you'll remember me, Jenny. I know I'll remember you. Wait, you said I was your princess, didn't you? Yes. Well, prove it. Take me with you. That would be out of the question. Absolutely. Hmm... She does have a point, you know. It's hard being a king. The first one they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job and it makes a life form watchful and a little lonely. The council would never permit it. My appointees all. Sir, you know the rules. I should. I made them. Please, Ben. Please. If only there were some way. Ben? Hmm? Come here. I have to tell you something in private. Your Majesty, there's simply no more time. Gentlemen, one last request. I want a minute alone with Jenny. But, sir... I promise by our fathers that I won't run away or try to escape. 
You give your royal word. Precisely. What do you think? I don't see how we can refuse. Very well. One minute, your majesty. Earth time. One minute it is. Excuse us while we sit down next to you, Mrs. Gant. We won't be long. She can't hear you. As far as she's concerned, we're not here at all. Frozen in time, as it were. What's that bottle in her hand? It's called beer. An intoxicating beverage based on the fermentation of single-celled life forms. I should take it out of her hand, in case she drops it. No, no. I think she's meant to have one at all times. Some sort of self-medication for behavioral control. Oh. Remember to start the temporal flow again when we leave. Of course. What's going to happen when we get back? No, a parade, I imagine. All the riffraff slithering along the Grand Crater. Quite a sight. We'll be celebrities. Quite. Don't forget to have your antennae washed and set. Hmm. What are they talking about in there? Privileged communication. I suppose. Oh, to have blue blood in our veins, eh? Uh, green. Right. Time? Time. Sorry, Your Majesty, but the minute is... Yes? Oh, no. Your Majesty, you can't be serious. But we are. This isn't fair. This isn't fair at all. You can't do this to us. Why not? But there are two of you. What's the matter? Can't tell us apart? In that case, they'll just have to take both of us. Both? Yes. The Council wouldn't like it if you made a mistake. What if you brought back the wrong one? Well, I hope the Council will understand our dilemma and make certain allowances. Perhaps they will. Shall, Shall we go? go? We'll have to send in Agnes a postcard. Yeah, postmark deep space with a picture of Ben the way he really looks. She won't believe how handsome he is. Indeed. Indeed. <laughs> no, Aunt Agnes won't believe it because she has more temper than imagination more suspicion than understanding, and no patience for either science fiction or fantasy. But eventually it may occur to her that one day, on another planet, in the far reaches of space, her niece will grow up to be not only a princess, but an honest-to-goodness queen. Said coronation to take place somewhere in the Twilight Zone. More from the Twilight Zone after this. You are about to enter another dimension. A dimension not only of sight and sound, but of mind. A journey into a wondrous land of imagination. Next stop, the Twilight Zone. Hi, this is Stacy Keach. I'd like to take a moment to tell you about our Twilight Zone website at twilightzoneradio.com. At twilightzoneradio.com, you'll find the latest information on these Twilight Zone radio dramas, including behind-the-scenes photographs, plus the newest product releases, trivia contests, ways to contact us, other Twilight Zone-related info and merchandise, plus links to other fascinating websites. So make your next stop, twilightzoneradio.com. Visit twilightzoneradio.com to purchase these Twilight Zone radio dramas on cassette and CD, or call toll-free 1-866-989-ZONE. That's 1-866-989-9663. The Fugitive, starring Stan Freeberg with Stacy Keach as your narrator, was adapted for radio by Dennis Etcherson and written for The Twilight Zone by Charles Beaumont. Heard in the cast were Amanda Amari, Meg Falcon, David Darlow, Jeff Lupiton, Doug James, Mike Castle, J. David Ruby, and Clint Todd. To learn more about The Twilight Zone radio dramas and to obtain audio cassettes and CDs of these programs, visit our website at twilightzoneradio.com. The producers of The Twilight Zone wish to thank CBS Enterprises, Carol Serling, Dennis Etcheson, Dick Brescia Associates, Claire Simon Casting, Terry Jennings, XM Satellite Radio, Sirius Satellite Radio, our sponsors and our radio affiliates for helping make this series possible. This copyrighted radio series is produced and directed by Carl Amari and Roger Wolski for Falcon Picture Group. Doug James speaking. <laughs>